multipass. Yeah. Multipass. Lila, uh, multipass. Yeah. Hi, welcome back to the Wi-Fi channel, where we talk nothing about Wi-Fi. Weird. Weird. So since I got my new cool camera, I haven't had a light pollution filter anymore because the one I had for my DSLR was a clip-in, so that's not going to work for me. I had the SV Boney CLS. Worked pretty good. If I don't use a light pollution filter, the restaurant that shall not be named across the street that blasts light into my backyard just gives me a bad gradient. So I needed something to replace that. I got looking around. Um, Actually on SV Boney's website, I saw they had a new filter, the SV240. It's a multi-narrow band. It's supposed to be good for broadband targets because it allows all the good light through and tries to block the bad light. When I found it, it must have been a brand new filter because it was on for a really good deal on their website. It now looks like it retails for about 169 If you're lucky, you can get it for 139 still cheaper than brand x so it came let's see what it looks like new package from china big package there we have it SV Boney model SV240 multi narrow band filter. Your usual SV Boney case and a white piece of paper. All right, this is new. We have nice. No dust on this bugger. All right, that looks very nice, very healthy, feels just like my other dual narrow band. Nice aluminum construction, threads. Okay, so this one, so as I said, I was using the CLS filter before, which had band passes like this we had a big wide one at the bottom and starting at about I don't know 700 there went up and let everything else in so this one called multi narrow band I don't know how narrow you call 24 nanometers and 20 nanometers and 115 nanometers but so we have 24 at the bottom, 20 at 650 or so, and then 115 on the infrared side. So it certainly blocks out a lot more light pollution, so this will be good for my broadband images, I hope. So I guess all there is, let's test it. So random, I finally got around to printing these. They're the filter drawer accessories from Ogma. A little case to keep your filters in when you're not using them. Printed filter drawer. Probably have to be really careful with the threads on these, but we'll try it out and see. This one, I suppose, it's for shooting darks. Don't really do the dark thing much anymore, but we'll have that to try. Anyway, seem to print well. STL files are on the Ogma website. That is all. All right, hopefully we got couple of nights clear. We'll try out the multi-pass filter. So I picked a broadband target. The target I'm going to shoot tonight is Messier 45. Les 7 sur. Oh, oh. 
Yeah, my French is horrible. Okay, so let's get it dark and take some pictures. Okay, final thoughts on the filter. Well, here is a five minute sub. As you can see, my stars are kind of bloaty. Yes, bloaty is a scientific term. I don't think you can blame the bloatiness on the filter really, uh, even though I had 0% cloud cover. Astrofaric told me that my seeing and my transparency was below average usually, and even hip core once in a while. So I don't think that's where the bloatiness came from. There may have been a high haze in the atmosphere contributed to that, and, and my HFR history and Nina kind of corroborated that. But here's the important part. This is the stacked image in Cyril. As you can see, there's very little to no gradient, a little bit, but not near as much as there would have been without a filter. So that's all I'm really looking for with this. One click in Graxpert, that's gone. So we'll see how I can process this. We'll put it at the end of the video. Just don't expect an APOD yet. So I can't wait to get to try this on a really clear night with good seeing. I think it's okay. Good price. SV Boney seems to be doing well lately in all of their products. So if this has helped you at all, give me a like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. And as always, the fifth element is love and clouds suck.